On today's show, Tesla and NHTSA yet again discuss exactly what NHTSA's five-star crash tests do and do not say. Audi promises a 12-minute to 80% full recharge time for all of its electric cars from 2020 onwards. And Formula E race car driver Daniel Abt sets a new electric car record by driving backwards really, really fast. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, folks. I hope your weekend has gone well so far. And even though you're probably getting ready to go to work tomorrow morning, here's the roundup of the last week in the world of cleaner, greener transport and energy. Tesla and the US National Highway Traffic Safety Administration have yet again had a disagreement about what NHTSA's official five-star crash test rating means. Quoting data from the NHTSA tests on its Model 3 electric car, Tesla said at the start of the week that Model 3 has the lowest probability of injury of all cars the safety agency has ever tested. But NHTSA, as it has done in the past, reiterated its statement that it does not distinguish safety performance beyond its five-star rating system, arguing that there is no safest vehicle among those vehicles achieving five stars. Honestly, it's a pointless argument from both sides, as a five-star rating should tell you everything you need to know. It's a safe car. Switching the auto industry to electric cars will cause 100,000 jobs to be lost. That's according to Volkswagen boss Herbert Diaz, who is pushing back against a new proposal in Europe to reduce CO2 emissions by 35% by 2040, something that would require automakers to make far more plug-in cars. It's not clear where he gets his figures from, but it doesn't look good for the company that's simultaneously trying to set itself up as the dominant force in the EV world and promises its range of long-range electric cars will be priced at a point everyone can afford. Time is running out, and if the world doesn't accelerate its transition to clean energy and transportation, we're all boned. That's essentially the message from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which issued a new stark report this week, stating that if we are to keep global temperature rise to a point where we could just about deal with the effects of climate change, we need to slash our fossil fuel consumption to one third of its current levels by 2050. Part of that change can be affected by changing how we use our cars and what fuels them, but it also means that we need to start taking personal responsibility for our own carbon emissions, not pointing fingers at other countries or people and saying, well, they're not doing anything. We've got one planet, folks. Let's not F it up. Mercedes-Benz has really been ramping up its plans for plug-in vehicles of late and has just said that its GLE plug-in hybrid, due to launch next year, will be the first plug-in hybrid to offer an all-electric range over 100 kilometers, 62 miles per charge. That decision is partly to ensure that the GLE plug-in hybrid meets new tougher economy and emissions targets, but it also ensures the car classifies for credits and incentives under stricter WLTP test cycles, which have caused a whole lot of plug-ins to just lose their eligibility. The GLE plug-in hybrid will launch in the second half of next year, probably as a 2020 model year car. BMW has issued an official recall on nearly all 2018 and 2019 plug-in vehicles sold in the US. This includes not only the i3 and i8, but plug-in hybrids like the Mini Countryman SE All 4 and BMW's X5 xDrive 40e. The reason? Potential capacitor failure in the car's portable charge cables, which could result in a shock to the user or start a fire. BMW will contact owners shortly for replacement of the affected units under warranty. Faraday Future has been doing pretty well of late, but this week its world turned upside down again when it announced it's trying to get out of the $2 billion deal inked earlier this year with Evergrande Health. It's all to do with a power struggle between Evergrande Health and YT Gia, the founder of Faraday Future, who is currently living in the US, but allegedly owes a lot of money in his home country of China. This one is messy, and I wouldn't be surprised if it causes Faraday Future's death. Rare earth magnets like neodymium are often used in electric car motors because they're incredibly strong for their given size. They're also found in lots of other modern products like cell phones, laptops, and spinning platter computer hard drives. But they're also in a finite resource, which is why the Oak Ridge National Laboratory in the US has just demonstrated a second life project for rare earth magnets, taking them from old computer hard drives and gadgets and using them to build a brand new electric motor. It's not a new type of magnet per se, but it could dramatically help lower lifetime environmental costs of rare earth metal mining. 
Under the late Sergio Marchione, Fiat Chrysler wasn't all that keen on plug-in vehicles, with only the Fiat 500e and Chrysler Pacifica hybrid minivan to show for it. Now FCA has announced plans to change that, announcing the subcompact Jeep Renegade SUV will be offered as a plug-in hybrid from 2020 onwards. It will be built in Italy and will be the first of 12 new electrified models due to hit the market from the company by 2022. Mercedes-Benz has officially broken ground this week on a brand new battery production facility in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. It's one of several new production facilities planned around the world where Mercedes-Benz will produce its own lithium-ion battery packs for use in a range of new electric and plug-in hybrids. The battery production facility will likely be up and running in time for the 2020 launch of the Mercedes-Benz EQC, the brand's first long-range all-electric model. Building on the technology developed by its sister company Porsche for the Taycan electric sports sedan, Audi has confirmed that its upcoming e-tron GT, which we'll see for the first time at the LA Auto Show, will come to market in 2020 with a 12-minute recharge time from empty to 80% full. It's made possible by the new next-gen 800-volt CCS quick charging standard and says Audi will be included on all of its electric models from 2020 onwards. Vertical Aerospace, the British-based vertical air taxi company, has announced its plans to bring an air taxi service to operation in the UK within three years. Unlike other vertical passenger drone aircraft companies, Vertical Aerospace says it will avoid any issues with regulations not allowing autonomous passenger VTOL craft by using trained pilots to fly the vehicles until air regulations have caught up. It says it will have short-haul flights operating with a range of around 800 kilometers or 500 miles no later than 2022. Do you ever forget to plug in your electric car? Generally, I'm pretty good at remembering, but robotic manufacturing machine company Fanuc just has demonstrated a solution to those who forget, an automated plugging in bot. It was all part of a trade display at a recent event where Fanuc had two of its robots lift a Chevrolet Bolt EV high into the air to examine its undercarriage and suspension and then plug it in too. Not a new thing, we've seen robotic pluggers in before, but very much overkill. And finally, Formula E race car driver Daniel Abd is most certainly someone who has drunk the EV Kool-Aid, showing off his skill on the racetrack regularly. But this week, he broke a new record in the Schaffer 4E Performance, a custom-built Audi RS3 with four Formula E motors developing a total of 880 kilowatts fitted. What was the record? Driving in reverse, really quickly. The car not only set a new record, 210 kph, or about 130 miles per hour, but it also made for some truly amazing videos. I've linked in the show notes below, so make sure you watch. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye for the week. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, well, you know where to send it. As always, I will be back soon with more Ecotech goodness. So make sure you hit that notification bell below to find out the minute, the second a new show is uploaded. In the meantime, I hope you have a fantastic rest of the weekend, what remains of it. Make sure you do something fun this week and don't forget to help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.